This is how I make decisions for my business and how I prioritize the best ones. I do it by putting a price on every opportunity. In this video, I'm showing you how to decide what to pursue and when. Hey guys, Mandy here. We talk a lot about photography and content creation, why it's important for your business, and how to do it in the easiest, most effective way possible. But of course, there are other parts to business, and it's time we started talking about those too. So, welcome to my brand new YouTube series, Blank the Builder, where I share specific business strategies that have helped me grow Replica and keep it growing. We'll talk about general business strategy, brand building, marketing, content creation, and a lot more. There will also be a lot of acronyms because you know I love an acronym, specific strategies, and real action items at the end of every video. And any time I can link to a free resource, I will. If we haven't met yet, I started Replica Surfaces in 2018 on Kickstarter. We've grown a lot since then, but we're still new and we're still really small. Why is that important? because that likely means I'm only two steps ahead of you in business, or we're at similar places. And those are the best kind of mentors, just two steps ahead, because they've just had the problem you're having and their solutions are still relevant to you. But mentors are a topic for another video. Finally, why did I call it Blank the Builder? Because your name goes in the blank. Wherever you are on your business journey, whether you're pre-launch, two months in, or 20 years in, you're building. And that's something to be really proud of and energized by, even when it's tough. And if your name is actually Bob or Barb, this is even cuter. So now that you've mentally inserted your name into this series, let's dive in. As you grow your small business, opportunities are gonna start coming your way fast and furious. There's always room for family. I define an opportunity as anything you could choose to do or not do. It could be an idea you had, a recommendation someone gave you, or a partnership that a fellow business owner emailed you about. If it takes any amount of your time, is optional, and it could have a positive outcome for your business, it counts as an opportunity. But every opportunity has a price. Price can be the actual monetary investment, the time investment, and the potential learning curve to you or your team. And not every opportunity has an equal probability of success just because it costs the same amount of money or took as much time as another opportunity. So, to decide which ones are worth my time, I started putting a price on everything. I analyze opportunities using five factors, P-R-I-C-E. It's how I know what to say yes to and how to prioritize those yeses so that the strongest ones happen first. It's how I stay organized and intentional about the decisions that propel Replica forward. Price stands for price, risk, impact, confidence, and ease. For every opportunity that comes my way, I give it a score of one to five for each of these five factors. One is bad, five is incredible. It's important to keep the factors separate and not add them up into a total score. You'll see why soon. So, an example score would look like this. This opportunity would be relatively low cost and low risk with potentially high impact and high confidence of working. But it isn't easy. That means it's either time consuming or no one at Replica has a specific talent required to accomplish it. When I get these opportunities on my desk, I find a way to make them easier, often by hiring a freelancer because this opportunity is just too good to let pass. If, however, it had a price of two, expensive, or an impact of two, low potential gains, I'd probably pass on it or deprioritize it. Another example is liking and subscribing. It's free, zero risk, and super easy, so I'd strongly consider doing that. Now, let's go through each factor, but let's do it out of order. P and R are a little heavy, while I, C, E are motivating and uplifting. That's the order I use, and unfortunately, ISERP isn't a word, so we'll just do it this way. Let's start with impact. Impact is your judgment of how big the opportunity could reasonably be. Note that I didn't say likely to be. 
That's what the C, confidence, is for. Note that I also said reasonably. That's because anything could go viral, but virality is largely beyond our control and it's also highly unlikely. So it's not worth planning for. Let's give an example. Right now, we're working on an incredible replica commercial to introduce ourselves to people who haven't heard of us before. There's no guarantee it'll work, but if it does, and there's a reasonable chance it will, the impact is high. So I gave this opportunity a four for impact. It's not earth shattering, but it is high. More on that commercial to come. Something like emailing a new photo tutorial to you guys is a two. It isn't crazy high impact for Replica, but it's worth doing because it scores well on ease, price, and risk. And I'm confident that you'll get value from it, which is incredibly important to me and to Replica. One thing you'll notice when you start scoring opportunities yourself is that almost nothing is a unicorn with fives across the board. If it ever is, you do it and you do it right now. But more often, the high impact stuff ranks lower on ease or price. It's either hard, costs a lot, or both. And the stuff that's easy and cheap isn't as high impact, but not always. And when you find something that's high impact and easy or cheap, you know that this is a yes opportunity and that it should be prioritized. C is confidence. How confident are you that this will have the impact you're expecting? This is a hard one because business can be a total crapshoot. Some things that you think will dazzle can totally fizzle, and things that you didn't have much confidence in can become core to your business. You can't know before you try. So understanding this, I found myself giving way too many opportunities a three. And three is the worst. It doesn't help you at all with decision making. So how can you raise or lower a three to help you make a decision? First, you can reflect on similar past decisions and their outcomes. But that's hard when you don't have a lot of past behind you. So ask your customers or your audience. I have found this so helpful for decision making that I now ask our Replica customers about their opinions at least once a month. Should we make this product? How would you change this product design? What surfaces do you want to see? What topics do you want to learn about in YouTube videos? Things like that. Sometimes they're so clever or so unexpected that we go back to the drawing board or scrap an idea completely. Either way, my confidence of three turns into a one or a four or five because I ask the only people whose opinion matters. To ask your customers, I recommend using a survey app. Survey Legend is very good and lets you make five surveys for free. After that, it's around $39 per month at the time of this recording. If you want more complex surveying where people can go down different paths depending on their answers, Typeform is amazing. It's more expensive, so I would just stick with Survey Legend as long as it's meeting your needs. You can post your survey to Instagram, you can email it to your email list, and you can text it out if you text your customers. Depending on how many responses you want to receive, you can consider tying your survey with a giveaway to win your product or service, or a related product or service your customers would want. Just know that you don't have to do that. If you're building a brand where your customers care about it and about you, many people will respond just because they enjoy being an active part of what you're building. I love giving feedback to companies I care about. Moving on to E for ease. I think of ease as a combination of talent and bandwidth. Yours and that of your team members if you have any. Or if no one within your business can do it, how easy is it to find a contractor who can? One is hard or very time consuming. Five is breezy and quick. The ease score can be improved by following the cliche of working smarter rather than harder. If you don't have the time or expertise to take on an opportunity that otherwise scores highly, consider contracting someone. Yes, that means the price score goes down a bit, but it may be worth it if the ease score goes up, freeing you to work on the next best opportunity. There's a reason I don't code our website because you would not be watching this video if I had to. A great resource for finding professional freelancers is Upwork.com. With Upwork, you describe a project you need completed and freelancers submit quotes for completing it. You get to see their bio, past experience, and their reviews. Some killers will even submit their finished product with their quote. If you love it, you pay them and you're done. If you don't, you can work with them to make it what you want or you can decline their quote. You are not obligated to accept any quote that isn't right for you. That's how I had this amazing graphic made for my photo formula course. All right, 
so we've covered impact, confidence, and ease. You can stop there, but then you haven't considered the cost, which matters at all stages of business, or impact on your brand, which is vital if you want to grow. That's why I added two more criteria, price and risk. Remember that on the one to five scale, one is bad and five is incredible. So an expensive endeavor is a one, not a five. Same for risk. High risk is one, zero risk is five. So price, it's the price. It's the actual monetary cost of doing something. Launching a digital marketing campaign is otherworldly expensive, so it's a one. Creating high quality TikTok content yourself is free, so it's a five. That doesn't make one of these better than the other on the whole, but price-wise, one is clearly optimal. If a pricey investment scores highly on other components though, it's probably worth it. And of course, your score should be relative to where you are in business at this moment. So early on, $200 is a considerable investment and you may give it a four or five. As you grow, $200 may become a one. I'm gonna give you an example that sounds cheesy, but I picked it because it's something that everyone watching has done or is considering doing. If I were transported to an alternate universe where I never created replica, but I was struggling with product photography the way I used to, and someone recommended ordering replica surfaces created by someone else, this is the score that I'd give that opportunity. The P is a three. It isn't higher because every cost is an investment early on, but it isn't lower because I can start with just three surfaces and build my collection over time. If I was ordering right now, I'd also sign up for text to get 15% off my order to make it even more reasonable. The other scores are four or five because product photos and videos are high impact for small businesses and have zero brand risk. Ease is a four because photography is hard when you're alone, but Replica's founder, whoever she is, has made sure that I had the education and community I needed to succeed. So the opportunity of investing in Replica services would have been a no-brainer for my business. Last is risk. This is the risk to your brand or business model. An example would be partnering with someone who is beloved by some, but controversial to others. Another could be creating a new product to add to your line. Something else to factor into risk is the reversibility if you don't like the outcome. One massive benefit to being in the early stages of business is that you're incredibly nimble and free to try new things. Very few decisions are irreversible or ruinous to your reputation early on. If you raise prices and sales drop, go back to the original price. If you try a new candle scent and your customers hate it, just scrap the additive. Waste is always painful, but $50 now to try something new is mentally easier to part with than thousands later on when you're buying larger quantities. We're all pursuing growth, that's why we're even talking right now, but do relish in the flexibility of small while you have it. Replica isn't as flexible as we once were, but we're still way more nimble than the big brands. That's why you can tell me that you want holiday services in July and I can make it happen a month later. All of this said, risk is a very personal part of this that only you or a great mentor can know the answer to. For every opportunity, rank the risk one to five. One is super risky and relatively irreversible. Five is when you rack your brain and you can't think of any harm that it could do. So that's price and that's how you can use it to score an opportunity. Is it a yes? And if so, is it a now or is it a later? If confidence is a three, remember that you can raise or lower it by asking your customers. If ease is low, consider hiring a freelancer with the skills and bandwidth to make it happen. So, now you have a bunch of opportunities ranked. How do you choose? If it's fours and fives across the board, it's a yes right now. If it's not, that's when you decide the weight each component carries for you. Each component of price can carry a different weight for every business or person. For instance, risk is extremely important to me and to Replica because we care so much about the brand experience. So even if impact is high, I may not do that thing if risk is too high. That's a very personal choice. Finally, price is good for the business person's soul. Something I learned recently is that we shouldn't judge a decision based on its outcome. A good decision may not work out for reasons that are beyond our control 
and a bad decision may pan out based on luck. If an opportunity doesn't work out, but it seemed promising based on its price score, it was still a good decision. So chalk it up to a learning opportunity and do not beat yourself up. Easier said than done, I know, but there's no better way to waste future opportunities than by feeling down on yourself for a past failure. And now you know how to price every opportunity. While it's still fresh in your mind, try these action items. Use the link below to download a copy of my free price spreadsheet. Jot down three opportunities you said yes to in the past and have completed. Score each of them one to five for each factor. This will give you a real life feel for what low and high look like to you. Jot down three opportunities you're considering now. Score them one to five for each factor. If you're having trouble deciding, compare them to the scores you gave to the past opportunities. Circle any threes on confidence. Circle any three and below on ease. For every three on confidence that has an otherwise high score, schedule a way to ask your customers. Consider surveying. For every three or below on ease that has an otherwise high score, take 20 minutes and brainstorm someone you know who could do it better than you. If you don't know someone, sign up for an Upwork account and post a project description. Based on the quotes you get, you'll see whether you can raise the ease score without tanking the price score. If you can, that's something worth saying yes to. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think, if you wanna see more business videos like this, and what business topics you'd like me to cover in the future.